Hello everyone, it's Spawn Point, so the all new PlayStation Plus has finally launched worldwide, with the UK and Europe getting it yesterday. And with this new PS Plus, we now have hundreds of new games, including PS1, 2, 3, 4, PS5 and PSP. Well, today we're going to take a look at the three new tiers, see what the main differences are, what games we actually get, and ultimately which is the best option to go for right now. So if you're not sure whether you need to go for the essential, extra or premium plan, hopefully today's video will help you decide. And if you haven't already, please drop a like on this video and subscribe if you want to see more PlayStation videos. Now previously PS Plus was a one tier system which you subscribe to to play online multiplayer, get discounts to games and download those monthly games. And then if you wanted to, you could then subscribe to PS Now separately. Well they've kind of combined these two services into one but they've split them out into three different tiers. We've got Premium, Extra and Essential. Each comes with different pricing and different options. Which one you think is best depends entirely if you see value in the different benefits. And remember that everything that you see in the Essential plan is included in the higher tiers as well. And then everything in Extra is also included in premium. Now I'm in the UK so the pricing is obviously in pounds but here are the different costs. If you want to pay monthly it comes in at £13.49 for premium, £10.99 for extra and £6.99 for essential. And if you want to pay every three months instead it comes in slightly cheaper and you're saving around 20 to 30 pence per month. And finally the yearly subscription is where you actually save the most. So the premium works out at £8.34 per month instead of £13.49. Extra works out at £7 instead of £10.99. And Essential comes in at £4.17 instead of £6.99. But you are obviously paying these annually, not every month. Now I had actually previously stacked some PS Now and PS Plus subscriptions from before. So with the new tier system, they've actually automatically converted me onto the premium plan. And jumping into the subscriptions area in settings, you can see here now that I've got the premium until August the 1st, 2025. So it's great to see that they have automatically converted me onto the premium plan, but that's definitely something worth checking out in your own plan if you were a previous subscriber. Okay, let's take a quick look around the new PS Plus menu and see what we get. So we've got buttons off to the game catalogue, the classic games, game trials and a few others. And then all of the benefits are shown underneath which we will go over in a minute. Then under this we've got various other things like the classic games are listed, we've got the game trials, we've got must play games, as well as some recommendations for other games that you should play. So as you scroll around here you can see all of the different games available and the different categories as well. But if we tab across the top here you can actually go through the benefits of PlayStation Plus. So all of these we will obviously cover in today's video. And and then next you've got the collections tab. Now these are all of the games available split out into different genres and platforms. And this is definitely the best way to navigate through all of the available games. Now there is a view all games area but it's a huge list of games to scroll through. Okay so that's the navigation and kind of what the menu looks like but let's dive straight into the different plans that are available. So first up we've got the essential plan which is basically a replacement of the PS Plus that we had before. We get the monthly games, online multiplayer, the PlayStation Plus collection, discounts and cloud storage. So if you were a PS Plus subscriber before this is exactly what you're used to already. Now the PlayStation Plus collection includes some of the best PlayStation 4 games that there are. Games like Crash Bandicoot, God of War, Final Fantasy and The Last of Us. In total there are 19 games included with this plan. And I'll tell you what if you've not played God of War yet definitely give this one a go. Now the essential plan does also come with cloud storage and that's 100 gigabytes for PS4 and 100 gigabytes for PS5 games. And this lets you back up your game data to the cloud in case you need it again in the future. And we also get those monthly games, so whether the games are worth downloading varies from month to month, but it's always worth adding them to your library just in case. And then the essential plan also comes with exclusive discounts to certain games or add-ons. So if there are some games you were thinking of buying and there's a discount available, signing up to the essential plan will make the most sense. So as you can tell the essential plan really is no different to the PlayStation Plus that we've had before, but it's the next two plans is where you will see the differences. Okay, so then there's the extra plan. So this gets you everything that we saw in the essential plan, but it also unlocks the game catalog. And this is where we see hundreds of PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games added. How it works is as long as you have an active subscription, you can download and play any of these games while you're on the extra or the premium plan. Some of these games are well worth the money for the sub. Games like Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Assassin's Creed, Demon's Souls, and Ghost of Tsushima. I mean, as I scroll through this list now, you can see just how many we get. Some of these are actually part of the PlayStation Plus collection that you get in the essential tier so games like days gone and god of war well you would have got those anyway but otherwise all of these are included now i'm actually seeing a few duplicates here as well so maybe 10 or so are duplicates now i'll just keep scrolling through this list so you can see all of the games that are available on the extra plan now there are some games in here that i've never played before in fact some of these games i've never even heard of so i will likely download these to give them a go okay so in total i make it 367 games are included in the game catalog now that might be out by 10 or 20 or so and there are definitely a few duplicates 
duplicates as well as some of the PS Collection games. But this definitely gives you an idea at least of the number of games and the games included within this catalogue. Now when you're ready to download any of these games you just head over to the game page and you can see a download button with a PS symbol next to it. And that's it, we've now got this game at no extra cost. So this game catalogue that we've just gone through is literally the one and only feature that sets the extra plan apart from the essential plan. But for the extra that you're paying for you are getting hundreds of PS4 and PS5 games. All you need to do is download what maybe two or three of these and it's pretty much paid for itself. Next up we've got the premium plan. Now this is the top tier option which includes everything that we've seen so far in today's video plus these added benefits. So we've got the classic catalogue, we've got the game trials as well as cloud streaming. Whether these three features are worth it to you I guess comes down to the value of the games. But the number one feature for most is probably going to be the classic library. This unlocks hundreds of PS1, PS2 and PSP games. Now I'm scrolling through the list now and you're able to see all of the games included. There are a few old ones here that I remember playing back on the PS1 as well as the PS2. So here's Toy Story 2 for example. And these games can then be downloaded as you would expect to do with any previous game and you can play them as long as you have an active sub. So I was actually expecting far more games to be included but I guess it is early days. I make the total count of these classic PS1, PS2 and PSP games to be just 37 games. Hopefully over the coming months we'll see more and more games added. I would like to see the original driver for a place PlayStation 1 and maybe even the getaway from the PlayStation 2. So are there any PS1 or PS2 games that you would definitely like to see added? Then we have some remasters, games like The Last of Us, but that is included in the collection anyway. We've also got Borderlands in here, we've got Mafia, Heavy Rain and a few more. I make the total remasters coming in at 49 games. And then we have the PlayStation 3 games and this is by far the largest catalogue of games in the entire lineup. There are literally hundreds of games in here. I see Batman, Cars, God of War and a few Lego games as well. Well in total I make the PlayStation 5 catalogue of games 135. That is quite a lot of games here for a classic catalogue, but I guess it depends if there are any games in here that you would actually like to play. So in total, if we look at the entire library of classic games, I make it 221 games. Again, this is only included in the premium plans, you will not get this in the other two. I think there are definitely some great games in here, but I would like to see more added over the coming months. Now another feature included in the premium plan is the cloud streaming and this lets you stream hundreds of games without the need to download them first. There are a few PS4 games in here but most of them are PS3 games and that's because you actually don't download those anyway, you can only stream them. All you need to do is browse through the library, choose the game and just press stream. Depending on the game it will only take you a minute or two to get ready and then that's it, we're in and we're playing the game without needing to wait for the download. I've tested a few games over the last 24 hours and quality looks okay. I have noticed a few glitches as I'm playing but I'm not sure if that's the game or the streaming service. But this actually looks really good considering I've not needed to download the entire game first. Let me try to stream another game quickly, let's try Cars 2, I know my kids will love this. And I'll tell you what, for a classic PS2 game this plays really well and again this is being streamed. So first impressions on the cloud streaming for these games, well it works well. I think the flexibility of being able to play some of the old classic games without having to download them first is really useful. The quality of the games won't be as good as downloading them first I would imagine, but for some games does it really matter? Another huge advantage of cloud streaming is the fact that it won't take up any storage on the console. It's not a huge problem for me right now as I'm actually using a 4TB SSD. But for most, once you've downloaded what 10 or 15 games you've probably maxed it out. Oh and if you wondered what happens to the games once you've streamed them, well they do show up on your dashboard. You can then choose to remove from home which essentially deletes the game from the dashboard. And they will also show up in your game library collection so any of the games you've previously bought or downloaded they will show up here. But if you don't want those PS3 or those streamed games to show here, just hit the menu icon and hit hide. Another feature included with the premium plan are the trials or the game demos. It's a bit strange that this is a benefit of a paid for plan but let's stick with it for a second. So if you wanted to try a game before you buy it well you can actually download and play a time limited trial. Let's take Farming Simulator 22, I know that's a game that you're probably all looking forward to playing. So this game will give us a 3 hour trial if we download it now. But each game comes with its own time limit so Cyberpunk comes with 5 hours and that's probably long enough to know whether it's right for you. Horizon has a 5 hour trial too. And then you've got Biomutant, which is probably the only game that I actually want to try out. But this one only comes with a two hour trial. At the moment, there aren't that many trials to download. In fact, there are only 15 right now. We'll obviously see more and more added as new games come out, but today is very, very limited. I think these trials are a great idea. I'm not disputing that at all, but locking them behind the premium tier is just really odd to me. This should definitely be a feature that's included in the essential tier. No one's gonna buy the premium just to play these demos. And yeah, you're right. We've had some resistance. 
Okay, so we've looked at all three tiers, the different games we get available and the different benefits. But here are my final thoughts on which one I think is the best to buy right now. So first up, if you've only ever used PS Plus without the PS Now subscription, you will automatically move on to the Essential plan. You will then see no difference in the service that you've already used over the last few years. It is a great entry level plan with those PS Plus collection games and those monthly games as well. But if you want more from it and you want to play some awesome PS4 and PS5 games like Spider-Man, Demon's Souls and other relatively new games, the extra plan is hard to pass on. It's not a lot more than the essential plan but you are getting hundreds of PS4 and PS5 games and as I said before just download two or three and it's pretty much paid for itself. On paper the premium plan does have three extra benefits but I'm going to ignore the game trials for now as I don't really see that as a selling point. So that leaves us with the classic games and the cloud streaming. So the 200 or so PS1, PS2 and PS3 games are awesome and if there are a few classics in here that you definitely want to play this is the only way to do it. But if you scroll through the list and you've only seen a couple of games you want to play you'll probably want to give it a miss for now and then there's the cloud streaming which is an awesome feature that could save you time if you don't want to download the games that are available this way for me and my slow internet speed this could be a huge advantage for me and ultimately it comes down to just one thing are there enough games in the plan to justify the price i'd look through the full list again and see what games you actually want to play but for me if i wasn't automatically migrated onto the premium tier i would probably have just opted for the extra plan i think that's the sweet spot right now until we see more classic games and more trials added. And what about you? Out of the three tiers we've got now, the Essential, the Extra and the Premium, which one do you think is the best one or the one that you will go for? Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today and it was useful. Why don't you drop a PS Plus in the comments and I will give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my PS5 console covers video next, as it's where I unbox the three new PlayStation 5 plates that we saw a couple of weeks ago. Thanks for watching. Please like, sub and follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.